Eden Hazard was once one of the best players in the world. In fact, there was a point in time where Hazard was easily the best player in the Premier League and was deservedly worth over 100 million euros. However, recently he's been one of Real Madrid's biggest ever flops and doesn't even have a club anymore. So what went wrong for Eden Hazard? How did he go from being one of the best players in the world to an injury-plagued flop? Well, let's take a look at the rise and fall of Eden Hazard. Hazard was born on January 7th, 1991 in La Louvière in Belgium. He was born to Thierry and Kareem Hazard, who were both footballers. The father actually played semi-pro football as a CDM and his mother played as a striker in the Belgian women's division before getting pregnant with Eden Hazard. Basically what I've learned is that if a footballer and a footballer get married and have kids, their children are destined to be footballers as well. I mean just look at the kids. Eden Hazard and his three brothers, Thorgan, Killian and Ethan are all professional footballers. As I've said just now, Eden was born to play football and his talent was showing at a young age. He started playing for Royal Stade Branoi when he was four years old and one of the youth coaches there said he couldn't teach him anything because Eden already knew everything. Hazard was that good. After a while, Eden moved to another club called AFC Tubies, where he was then spotted by a Lille scout while playing in a tournament, and the scout wanted Eden to come to France to play for the French club. Since France and Belgium are close to each other, his parents agreed to the proposition and Eden Hazard became a Lille Academy player. A couple years after playing with the Lille Academy, the first team coaches took notice of him while he was still playing with the under 18s. Then, with several players being on international duty, Claude Puel, the manager of Lille at the time, called Hazard to play for the main team in a friendly while the main players were still away. Hazard went off in this game, and due to this performance, he was included in the 18-man squad with the first team for the first time, and he even made his professional debut on that very same day. He continuously went back and forth with the first team bench and the reserve team of Lille, but one thing is for sure, the first team coaches were going to have Hazard with the first team permanently very soon. And it was seen as very talented, obviously, and his low center of gravity allowed him to glide by opponents extremely easily. No matter how good the defender was, Hazard always got by. Plus, with versatility being a strong suit of Eden, since he could play anywhere across the front line, the coaches wanted him to be a part of the first team sooner rather than later. The only thing stopping this from happening at that moment in time was his lack of work ethic during practice. Although Eden used to get by without practicing that much since he was just that good, his lack of caring during training used to piss off the coaches. However, for the 2008-09 season, new manager Rudy Garcia wanted Hazard in the first team permanently and he didn't look back. Although Eden was only 17 years old at the time, he still balled out in his first professional season, with him getting 6 goals and 4 assists in 35 games. And in the season when he scored his first goal, he became the youngest goal scorer in Lille's history. Eden Hazard only continued to build on these performances because in the 2009-10 season, he improved his contribution drastically, with him getting 10 goals and 13 assists in 52 games, even though he was still only 18 at the time. These were amazing stats for someone as young as Aiden, and even Lee Un recognized that since he won back-to-back -back Young Player of the Year awards, being the first non-French player to do that. Things were also looking good for Lille going into the 2010-11 season, since they had some really good players that could help them challenge for the title, like Kabai and Gervinho, for example. Now, despite Lille having all these talented players, the teenager Eden Hazard was the one that shined the most. Not initially, however, because towards the beginning of the campaign, his work ethic came into question again, with him not showing enough effort during practice, and this led him getting benched for the games against Toulouse, Montpellier, and Lyon. Regardless of this though, Eden Hazard still shined this season and balled out, since he got 12 goals and 14 assists in 54 games. And these stats were a huge reason why Lille won an impressive double for the 2010-11 campaign, with them winning Ligue 1 and also the Coupe de France. Also, Hazard won the Ligue 1 Player of the Year award, making him the youngest player ever to win the award at the time, with him only being 20 years old. But this wasn't even Eden Hazard's best season at the club yet because in the 11-12 season, Hazard turned up the heat even more. That's because in 49 games, he managed to bag 22 goals and 22 assists. That's absolutely ridiculous from Hazard. And yes, Lille didn't get to win back-to-back -back Ligue 1 titles, but Eden Hazard won a lot for himself, like winning the Player of the Year award back-to-back, -back, becoming the second player in Ligue 1 history to ever do that, and also gain name to the team of the season for a third consecutive time. Now, let's get to the funny part. Hazard announced that he was going to leave Lille before the season even ended, and the final match as a Lille player was against Nancy, the team he made his debut against. However, the night before, the team decided to have a farewell party for Eden Hazard since he's leaving the club obviously. However, Eden Hazard took one shot of a drink, then another, then another, and you know how the story goes bro. Eden Hazard got absolutely shit faced. Thing is though, despite him barely even sleeping and having a massive hangover, he bagged a hat trick against Nazi within 30 minutes of his farewell game. This guy Eden Hazard, right there in that moment, proved that he was the real deal. Now moving on during the summer, Eden Hazard was seriously linked to both the Manchester clubs. However, he decided to join Chelsea since he believed it was a better project for him. Additionally, even though Chelsea literally just won the Champions League in the 11-12 season, they were doing a massive rebuild over the summer transfer window, with them spending a total of 89 million pounds, and 32 of those millions were spent for Hazard. And safe to say, that 32 million
million was well spent, and Chelsea fans knew it too just after only one season. That's because in 62 games, Hazard bagged himself 13 goals and 24 assists. That's pretty great for a debut season. Also, Hazard played 62 games, man. That's crazy to hear that after seeing how he is right now in 2023. My fault, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Back to top 8, Eden Hazard ended up winning his first trophy with Chelsea as well in his debut season since Chelsea won the Europa League against Benfica. However, Hazard ran into some really big controversy in his debut season as well. I'm pretty sure all of us remember this, but against Swansea in the EFL Cup, this ball boy was trying to waste time by keeping the ball from Hazard. Then, without a doubt, Hazard kicked the ball boy in the ribs and got the ball back. This obviously didn't go unnoticed and Hazard got himself sent off and was getting a ton of scrutiny. I guess you could say that what Hazard did to that ball boy was hazardous. <laughs> that literally made no sense. I'm just going to shut up now. Anyways, Hazard did well in the 2013-14 season, with him getting 17 goals and 10 assists in 49 games. It was a decrease in stats from the previous season, but it was still pretty good for a young Hazard at the time. Plus, he got his first nomination for the Ballon d'Or, and also won the PFA Young Player of the Year award, and he was also the runner-up to Luis Suarez for the PFA Players Player of the Year award for his amazing attacking performances under Chelsea coach at the time, Jose Mourinho. Oh, and he was also voted Chelsea's Player of the Year award in his second year at the club. Safe to say, Hazard was already on his way to becoming a Chelsea legend. But let me tell you, his best seasons haven't even come yet. But before that, Hazard was called up to play for Belgium at the 2014 World Cup, where he got an assist against Algeria and Russia in the group stages before getting knocked out by Argentina in the quarterfinals. There's not much else to that, so let's move on to the next season. For the 14-15 campaign, Hazard played amazing, with him getting 19 goals and 13 assists in 52 games. Not only that, his performances were a huge reason why Chelsea won the Premier League that season, the first time in around 5 years. Also, his performances definitely deserve some personal awards, and he got some, with him winning the PFA Players Player of the Year award, and also Chelsea's Player of the Year award for the second year in a row. Not only that, Mourinho gave Hazard his seal of approval, saying that Hazard was currently one of the top three players in the world, which meant at the time that Hazard was fighting with the likes of Ronaldo and Messi, which just shows how good Hazard was at the time. The Ballon d'Or ceremony even helped justify Mourinho's claims, kind of, because he got eighth place, which is really good, but not top three good. Regardless though, Eden Hazard was one of the best players in the world, and he was only going to go up from here. Except he didn't. He went down in the 15-16 campaign. That's because in the 15-16 season, Hazard only managed to get a measly six goals and eight assists in 43 games. And with him falling off, so did Chelsea, because they went from winning the league to getting 10th place. Oh, and also, this got Jose Mourinho sacked, which is fair enough. He did get heavily criticized this season as well, because Hazard was the only one who missed in the penalty shootout against Stoke City, and this led to Chelsea's elimination from the cup. Also, Hazard went on a scoreless run of 30 games, and only ended it through a penalty against MK Dons, which isn't really the most impressive thing, no offense to MK Dons fans. And also, Hazard got scrutinized for saying that it would be difficult to say no if PSG came calling to sign him. And obviously, for a player that's playing for another club, you shouldn't be saying this type of thing. Regardless of the controversies though, Chelsea fans still held them dear to their hearts, and so did Leicester City fans. Because in the 15-16 season, if you don't recall, Leicester City won the Premier League, and this was thanks to Eden Hazard, who scored his third goal in the Premier League that season against Tana, which gave Leicester the title. I still remember this goal vividly in my head, man. What a day for Leicester City. Anyways, with Hazard's fall off, you would think that it was only going to start getting worse from here, right? Wrong, because in the 16-17 season, Eden Hazard came back. Because in the 43 games, he got 17 goals and 7 assists, which is back to his similar level where he once was before. And this was also his best goal scoring form for Chelsea ever in the Premier League, with him bagging 16 alone in the Prem. This prolific goal scoring form from Eden Hazard was the main reason why Chelsea went back to the top of the Premier League to win it again. Hazard was definitely back. He showed it again in the 17-18 season too, with him getting 17 goals and 13 assists in 52 games. And one of his goals was against Manchester United in the FA Cup Final, with Chelsea won 1-0. More importantly though, this amazing form from Eden Hazard carried on to the 2018 World Cup, which Hazard showed how great he could really be. Real quick before we get to that though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. Anyways, back to the 2018 World Cup, Hazard turned into pretty much the best player in the world. He led Belgium at that tournament, like literally he had the captain's armband, but more importantly, he led by example on the pitch. In the first game against Panama, he got one assist, then against Tunisia, he got two goals, against Japan in the round of 16, he got an important assist, and then in the third place match against England, he got himself a goal. More importantly though, the game against France was an absolute masterclass from Eden Hazard, despite Belgium losing and him not getting any goals or assists. Hazard was on fire and he genuinely showed why he could be a top 3 player in the world. And he was rewarded for these performances at the tournament as well, with him being given the silver ball, the second best player of the tournament in FIFA's eyes, and also the third place medal, a historic achievement for Belgium's golden generation. Hazard wasn't finished feasting yet though, because in the 18-19 season, he cooked the hardest he's ever done, with him getting a total of 21 goals and 17 assists in 52 games, directly contributing to 50% of Chelsea's goals scored that season. Which is just crazy! Not only that, 
net in the Premier League alone, he got 16 goals and 15 assists. Absolutely filthy for Hazard, and he deservedly won the Premier League Playmaker of the Season award. Plus, Hazard didn't go trophyless this season as well, since Chelsea made it to the Europa League final against Arsenal in what was commonly known as Hazard's last game for the Blues. Hazard made it count though, with him backing two goals and one assist in the final against Arsenal, helping Chelsea win another Europa League trophy. In a post-match interview after the game though, Hazard pretty much told everybody that this game was his goodbye gift and he was getting ready for a new challenge. And that challenge was gonna be Real Madrid. It was only obvious that Hazard was gonna play for the Royal Whites. After all, his biggest dream when he was a child was to play for Real Madrid, and also his biggest idol, Zinedine Zidane, was an ex-Real Madrid player that Hazard studied and watched a lot as a kid. So when Zidane was the Real Madrid manager and wanted Hazard to come over to the club, Hazard simply could not refuse. And that's when Real Madrid put in an offer that Chelsea could never refuse, 100 million euros, which also had the option to rise up to 146 million euros due to the additional fees, making him Real Madrid's most expensive signing only after Gareth Bale. Plus, Hazard was set to be on 400,000 pounds a week, so safe to say that Real Madrid put a lot of faith in the Belgian superstar. And did this gamble that Real Madrid took pay off? Eh, no, not really. During preseason over that summer, he was already deemed as unfit as he put on too much weight, so things already weren't looking good for Hazard. And also, even though he got four goal contributions in his first seven games, he only managed to get a total of one goal and seven assists in the 22 games he took a part in that season. His campaign was severely affected due to multiple injuries though, like hamstring issues and even breaking his foot, which kept him out for a while. It's crazy because at Chelsea, Hazard barely got that many serious injuries, but in his first season at Real Madrid, he got two to three serious ones, so it wasn't looking too good for him. However, you never know. It could just be an unlucky first season, right? Wrong. Because Hazard's first season at Real Madrid signaled the start of his downfall. Because in the 2021 season, Hazard only managed to get four goals and one assist in 21 games. Then in the 21-22 season, he only got one goal and two assists in 23 games. And finally, at his last season at Real Madrid, he only got one goal and two assists in 10 games. But hey, at least he finally won the Champions League, even though he didn't play a part in it at all. Anyways, in four seasons at Real Madrid, he only got seven goals and 12 assists. That's terrible. And Hazard had one of the biggest falloffs in football history. So what happened? Why did Hazard do so awful with Real Madrid? Well, let's take a look at some of the reasons. Reason number one, Hazard didn't train well. For some time now, football fans have known that Eden Hazard was not a very good trainer. He was called out on it early while he was still at Lille, like I've already mentioned, and even coaches who favored him, like Jose Mourinho, said he's lazy as he won't sacrifice himself to run for the team. Plus, some of his ex-Chelsea teammates said that even though Hazard was their best player, he was arguably the worst trainer at the club. He was just so talented that his skills took him far and not really his hard work. You guys know the saying, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Well, Hazard didn't work hard it seems like, so when his talent started to fail him, he just couldn't pick himself back up. Reason number two, his luck with injuries was going to catch up to him. Let me explain what I mean. Back during his time with Chelsea and Lille, Eden Hazard didn't get too many serious injuries like I mentioned before. The craziest part is, Eden Hazard specializes in 1v1 dribbling, and this type of dribbling makes defenders foul you a lot. So guess what happened to Hazard? He was getting fouled a lot, and his luck with him not getting a serious injury was bound to end eventually, and when he joined Real Madrid, his luck definitely ended. Jose Mourinho even called it too, because he talked about this in a press conference, saying that if referees fail to protect players like Eden Hazard, they won't have players like Hazard anymore. And Mourinho was right, like always. Referees failed to protect Hazard, and his later stages of his career ended up being a failure. And now finally, reason number three, Real Madrid got better players. A few years ago, Real Madrid's main team average age was around 30 years old, and this left Florentino Perez to make some changes in their transfer plans and go for teenagers that are extremely talented. With that, Florentino Perez signed two Brazilian wingers, Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo. Now after a few years, Vinicius and Rodrigo are two of the best wingers in the world, and Vinicius is arguably a top three player in the world right now. When you have a younger player who's already killing it for the club, as a manager, you're going to prefer that over an injury-plagued older player like Eden Hazard was. And because of this, Hazard just didn't get that many opportunities anymore, even when he was fit. It's just the way football works sometimes, man. It can be a cruel sport. So what's next for Eden Hazard? Well, he and Real Madrid agreed to a termination of his contract, and now he has become a free agent. There are some rumors of Hazard going back to his home country of Belgium and playing there, or even making a move to the MLS to join Messi at Inter Miami. However, those aren't the only two reasons though, because at the time of me recording this, there's a chance that Eden Hazard could retire after years of struggling to stay fit. This would be incredibly sad to see, because a player as talented as Hazard going out like this is something that no football fans should want to see. However, whatever Hazard wishes to do in the future, I wish him the best, because I view football as entertainment, and Hazard has provided me with a lot of that over the years, and for that, I thank him, even though he bullied my club Liverpool at times. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video about Eden Hazard, please remember to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it, and if you want to learn more about a young superstar on the come up, Jamal Musiala, you should definitely check out this video right here, you won't regret it.